One of the things that Trump was known for while he was president was calling into Fox and Friends and rambling and rambling and rambling as the Fox and Friends host just blankly stared at the camera. And that hasn't happened in a while. But now they're thinking, all right, we're getting into election season. We're going full Trump. Let's pick up this routine once again. And that's what I have for you. A disaster of an interview. I'll show you in just a second here, Brian Kilmeade looking really uncomfortable as Trump is uh, answering some of these questions. And Trump once again struggling with something constitution related. But before getting to that, let's start with this. So many votes. I, right. I'm in Florida now, and I drove to another location yesterday, and every house has a Trump Vance sign on it. Every single house. There's not a house that we passed that doesn't. Right. We yeah. are. We have the vote. <laughs> yes, because that's that's how you determine the victor of an election. How many signs are printed for them? By the way, this is just a strange format. It really is. Four hosts all staring at you as the audience member, as Trump is on the phone going on and on and on. Something is not right. That doesn't. We yeah. are, we have the votes. <laughs> what we you have to do. You're doing by Charlie Chris House then. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. Just I, saying. Don't Charlie, Mr. I Mr. think Charlie probably has one up too, if you want to know. Uh, he's a Republican. But, but everybody, he was. everybody has, right. it's, it's amazing, the spirit. And I'll say this, we had two elections. The first election, we did great. The section, second election, we did much better than the first election. But Look at the smiles draining out of all four of their faces, thinking, we got sued 787.5, was it, million dollars for these claims being espoused on air? Please don't say this stuff about 2020 again. The second election, we did much better than the first election. But this election has right. more spirit than I've ever seen ever before. And that's because they've seen how bad these people are at and, government. And, and next up, Saturday in Minnesota. And next up, Saturday Remember in Minnesota. Remember this, they're destroying our country, Brian. Right. They are destroying Mr. our country. Pres Mr. Mr. President, President, thank you so much for your time thank today. You so we'll, be, much. we'll be following that rally. We told your communications well, you team much. you would be out by 8 o'clock, and we went 90 seconds over. It sounds like you... Desperately trying to... Uh, to cut him off and push him off the air there now that he's getting into the 2020 stuff and brian wait brian the country's going to be destroyed you heard that okay but we i was lawyer. saying sorry and my followers were saying that it were it was democrats that were causing a dangerous situation rhetorically by saying that maga is a threat to democracy but i'm saying the entire country will be destroyed if i lose and that's not creating a dangerous potentially violent situation and the notable part of that is trump is espousing this thing connected to the trump science thing of listen my instruction is we don't need the votes i tell my supporter we don't need any more votes we got all the votes we need they just can't cheat that's the way we're going to win which is really dangerous because already of course he's setting up this idea that there's no way for him to lose legitimately and the reason I'm in this hotel room, as I mentioned to you on yesterday's show, is we were just last night at a Trump rally talking to Trump supporters. And one of the things I asked many of them was, is there a world in which Kamala Harris can win legitimately? Okay, I understand you want Trump to win, but just like how I don't want Trump to win, but I can see a scenario where he does, and then I would have to accept the legitimate results. Do you have that possibility in your head? And almost all of them said no. There's no way. The only fair scenario here is that Trump wins, which is not how democracy works. It's not only fair whenever you win. Goodness gracious. Now, for this next clip, Aaron Rupar posted the clip uh, saying in response to his original one, watch Brian Kilmeade. He looks like he's passing a kidney stone. And I'll play this, then explain the constitutional issues. With, actually, let me say before I play this, because I want to give you my stance on it first. This is going to be Trump saying that people who burn American flags should be in jail for a year. And I want to make clear that as I've articulated to you all in the past, I find on an emotional level, not constitutional, but emotional level, repugnant the act of burning, desecrating a flag because of what it represents. People in my family serving that flag every single day. I do hate that. I also can hate that act 
while understanding the constitutionally protected act of freedom of expression, even if it's something that you very much disagree with. So this is something that Trump has struggled a long time with. And uh, Brian Kilmeade here looking very grumpy. He took the American flag down. They were writing Hamas on the bell outside of Union Station. What does a Donald Trump do if he takes office to these people on the street? Rarely have we seen anything like this, and I think you should get a one-year jail sentence if you do anything to desecrate the American flag. Now, people will say, oh, it's unconstitutional. Those are stupid people. Those are stupid people that say that. We have to work in Congress to get a one-year jail sentence. When they're allowed to stomp on the flag and put lighter fluid on the flag and set it afire, and when you're allowed to do that, you get a one-year jail sentence and you'll never see it again. And all over the world, Putin and President Xi of China, all over the world, they're watching this. Kim Jong-un, he looks at us like we're a bunch of babies. They see that. That wouldn't happen in their country. So it would, it's impossible for that to happen in their country. Where, where we have, we look so bad to the world. That was a disgraceful display yesterday. Isn't that so interesting? So to be clear, vandalizing some other entities property is a different conversation spray painting and and if you grab someone else's private property flag that's not what i'm talking about but if you get your own flag and you're burning it as vile as i perceive that act given my emotional attachment to the flag and what it represents that is constitutionally protected texas versus johnson originally ruled by the supreme court then reaffirmed when it was attempted to be legislated uh, federally that that is constitutionally protected, which makes sense. And it's a good example, and it's been used a lot, and I remember in schooling for me, as the quintessential example of what freedom of speech and expression protects because it goes as far as things that we're going to not like. But that's what even right-wingers used to say was the point. Yeah, nothing's that impactful Nothing's stunning about freedom of speech until people's speech is protected that you hate, or in the case of this, the expression that you may hate. And so Trump always appealing to emotion, evoking those rage feelings over principles that are really important. And it's sort of like what we talked about with the Ten Commandments conversation. It's not about a personal uh, or pro-anti-Christianity debate when discussing the legislating of posting Ten Commandments every school has to do in certain states. And when we say we don't want that, that's not because we're having a pro- or anti-Christianity debate. It's because we're having a pro- or anti-Constitution debate and respecting, regardless of your personal feelings on the subject, respecting the separation of church and state and understanding the importance of applying that in every scenario. Because when you start making exceptions, things very quickly get out of control. A similar thing here. It's about the principle of it. Try to separate that from your personal emotional uh, reaction that uh, is likely very justified, but you have to separate those things. And then also Trump cited as the places where this type of thing wouldn't happen. Did you notice he didn't cite a single free country? <laughs> Again, he admires, oh, this would never happen on Xi Jinping's watch. This would never happen on Kim Jong-un's watch, on Putin's watch. These things don't happen. But that's why we celebrate the flag, because we have more freedom in this country than in countries like that. You're right. They don't get to protest their government. They don't get to protest their country. That's one of the freedoms they don't have that we do. And I thought that a part of our patriotism was about the fact that we are freer and our government doesn't oppress us. But again, oh my gosh, the countries that do it right are, are authoritarian rules. Would you do me a favor? If you're not already, can you click that subscribe button? It makes a huge difference. It's easy, free, but I appreciate it greatly. Back to the video. Here is uh, this next moment. Uh, Kamala Harris has given two speeches uh, now that she's the candidate, and she's going, they're, they're almost identical speeches. This is what she's doing. She's going after you this way. Watch. 
before I was elected vice president, before I was elected United States senator, I was elected attorney general of the state of California, and I was a courtroom prosecutor before then. I took on perpetrators of all kinds. <laughs> Predators who abused women, fraudsters who ripped off consumers, cheaters who broke the rules for their own gain. So hear me when I say, I know Donald Trump's type. And in this campaign, I promise you, I will proudly put my record against his any day of the week. As the attack, what's the retort? Well, I think it's disgusting. And I get a kick out of one thing. They say, sir, be nice. You just got hit with a bullet. Maybe he's changed. Be nice. And I'd love to be nice, but I'm dealing against real garbage. Uh, when you hear that, they've weaponized the justice system against me. They've indicted me four times. They've pushed other lawsuits. Yeah. And then he goes on to blame all of his legal woes on they. Because it's Kamala Harris's fault that you were found liable for sexual abuse. And she's pointing that out. It's Kamala Harris's fault that your business engaged in fraud. It's Kamala Harris's fault that you kept and then withheld from the government and then engaged in a conspiracy to withhold from the government and then obstruct an investigation into those actions relating to classified documents. And actually that case was thrown out, but hopefully on appeal will be brought back uh, <laughs> because of the pro-Trump judge, goodness. How on earth and I've now posed this question to so many Trump supporters, and I never get a compelling answer except for, yep. How on earth do you find it to be more likely and plausible that all of those, the 2016 primary Trump said was rigged whenever he was losing certain primaries. The 2016 popular vote, he won the election, but he still said the popular vote was rigged. The 2020 election, he said, was rigged. All four of his criminal trials, rigged. Two civil cases, rigged. The media, when it does bad stories, rigged against him. Every court case relating to election rigged. Really? Personal responsibility. Come on, MAGA. You're now going for the guy who cites as better countries relating to the freedoms people are able to exercise. Countries like China. Doesn't seem very conservative, pro-American to me and then has no ability to accept personal responsibility for his actions. Doesn't seem very conservative, pro-American to me. And if that's his response, these are garbage people, to Kamala Harris making a really good, concise case about their contrast, she's the person who prosecuted the very low character people like Donald Trump, then he's in big trouble. Here's more. And they come from all over the world, not just South America. They have nothing on their side. And the abortion issue, which they think they have, they now don't have, because I was able to bring that back to the states, and the people are voting on it. And most people believe in the exceptions, the three exceptions. And the abortion issue is a much smaller. Look at what happened in Ohio. Uh, they voted, and they He's got fight. what you would say the progressives wanted yep. very much so. Same thing in Kansas. They got the people are voting. And so, Everybody wanted that issue, the abortion. They didn't want and now, Roe v. And now Wade. The states have they it. wanted it to be taken out of Congress. They wanted it to be taken right. out of the federal right. government. I was able to do that, and now people are voting, and they're voting the way the people want. That's Mr. the President, way it was always supposed to be. You're talking about... <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is funnier than watching them try to cut him off. Please, yeah, mm -hmm. no, you're, you're so right. You're, you, you. And then he looks over at Ainsley Earhart. Can you give us a shot? And then she jumps in, mm, Mr. President. Yes, please, shut up. Uh, because he'll just go on and on and on. I think, as a concept, in theory, what I'm about to say makes a lot of sense to people, but in practice, people are hoodwinked by the repetitiveness, the repetition that we get from Trump. And so what makes sense in theory is no matter how many times you say something that is false, doesn't make it true. You can say a false statement 10 billion times, doesn't make it true. 
But in practice, a lot of people, I've had people say to me, Luke, are you sure blank's not true? And when I ask them for specifics, why, why do you all of a sudden think that might be true? And you whittle it down, it's really just because Trump has been saying it so much. And surely he wouldn't say it that many times if it weren't true at all, right? So the Roe v. Wade thing. Everyone wanted Roe v. Wade to be overturned. Everyone wanted it. 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 Everyone. He thinks that if he can say it enough times, then we'll just start, oh, you're right. Women in state after state, red state after red state, having their health and life put into jeopardy because of these laws, pain and suffering inflicted onto women across the country, rights that they had their entire life yanked away from them. Oh, you're right. We did all want that. Thanks for telling us what we believe, Donald. He does think he can hypnotize us like that. So don't let him. Not that you would. But he cites, which is dumb, because if you're MAGA, why would you like him citing these examples? Examples of our policies winning in certain states. Well, the issue is we think that, get this, rights, basic rights should be across the whole country, not just in blue states or in red states where we prevail because of the popularity of our stances. And he's also right that every time this goes to a direct ballot initiative, pro-abortion rights win almost every time. But you know, a lot of the laws that are being implemented never are put up for a direct ballot initiative option for the voters. And instead, it's legislators implementing laws that are unpopular and that hurt people. They still pass them, even though Trump's correct in a sense that when you put it up to vote, even in a lot of red states, people side with reproductive rights. So we're saying, as a country, we're going to go on a federal level and protect people's rights so these crazy legislators on the state level don't keep messing up people's lives. But he thinks if he can keep saying it, everyone's happy. The issue's off the table. No one cares about that anymore. So shh. <laughs> yes, we do, Trump. Then you have this. They keep on tying you, whether it's yesterday's testimony when they were talking to Christopher Wray or whether it's Kamala Harris uh, on the stump. They keep on tying you to Project 2025, which is a 900 page uh, tomb put out by the Heritage Foundation. What is your response to what's in it? And what would you like to say about the role it's playing in your campaign? It's a group of very, very conservative people. They wrote a document that many of the points are fine. Many of the points are absolutely ridiculous. I have nothing to do with the document. I've never seen the document. I've seen certain things that are said in it. And it's a group of very conservative people that probably like me, but uh, it doesn't matter because it doesn't speak for me. Uh, they wrote something that I disagree with in many cases, and in some cases you agree. But it's like a group of radical left people that write something, and, you know, people get angry by it. This is a document I know nothing about. It's called Project 25. I heard about it a week ago, and it has nothing to do with me whatsoever. But, of course, our friends that are Democrats, radical... Even his denial of knowing anything about it when his close buddies are the ones putting it together is so weak that it makes it even harder for him to keep denying it. Because what did he say there? He said, essentially, in reviewing it, there are some things, excuse me, I agree with, some things I disagree with. And also, I've never seen it before, but I somehow know which points I agree and disagree with. I know that I don't have anything to do with it. I've never seen it before, except for when I saw it and learned about it, so I could say this. Oh, and also, I only heard about it a week ago. But more than a week ago, I was talking about not knowing anything about it and disagreeing with certain points. So did you only hear about it a week ago, but you were talking about it before, saying that you knew enough about it to say that you didn't agree with it, but you didn't actually back then and you were lying and you only actually heard about it a week ago? Or did you hear about it before that, but really learned about it? What, what are you saying? Or is he getting his timeline warped? Sometimes he said, the other day this happened, and it was years ago. Maybe it's one of those brain lapses, but I think he's just aware for all of Trump's issues, and <laughs> he has some issues. One thing he has a little bit of 
clearly to coalesce a cult like this is some political instincts and those instincts are telling him people hate project 2025 so while it's people who all are close allies of his crafting this an organization the heritage heritage foundation that he said the heritage foundation they're going to put together our plan for a second this was a speech we looked at the clip of they're going to put together an agenda for how we're going to govern and get things done in the second term. That's what they're doing with Project 2025. And they're doing great work, et cetera, et cetera. And all these people are going to be in Trump's administration. So whether he knows or not, this thing's getting implemented. And he agrees with a lot of the key points, as he said, uh, publicly many times. And it is a fascinating phenomenon, though, to see how afraid of this being associated with him he is. Because it shows your ideology, even you know you know to be unpopular let me know what you thought of that in the comments if you want to get extra content daily you can do so by clicking the join button below and if you want to donate to the uh, Kamala Harris campaign through our link so that we can track how many members of our audience have donated to get us to our 1 million dollars by 1 million subscribers goal you can do so by clicking the link in the description of this video